Welcome back friends. I hope you're having a fabulous Tuesday. This week I wanted to talk to you about something that I do with my fabric scraps. I will show you in just a second how I do this. Would you like to know? Well, if you would, you gotta stick around. I'm Nye with Ellie and Mac. Let's go friends. Hey, you came back. Yes. Welcome back friends. So generally we are always on the lookout for something that we can do with our scraps all the time. Do you have a giant basket of scraps somewhere in your sewing room? I'm not going to lie. I have a little bit of a mountain. Okay. And so what I'd like to do is I like to use as much of those scraps as possible, but sometimes you end up with scraps that are more like strings. Do you know what I mean? Like those very end pieces that are not wide enough to make anything out of. And you know, just you're like, you don't want to throw it away because if you combine them, they make a large amount of textile. And so you want to actually use them. Some folks like to stuff pillows with them. And I was doing that at one point until my pillows became so heavy that a pillow fight would probably put somebody's eye out. <laughs> So I'm not doing that anymore. However, I did figure out something awesome. My mom was visiting a couple weeks ago and she talked to me about a rug that we used to have in our living room when I was younger. I did not know this, but my mom braided that rug. And my mom actually spent quite a bit of her time crocheting, knitting, and braiding. And so she taught me how to braid in a rug. And that's what I'm doing with my scraps today. I made this throw rug for my bathroom out of a $12 scrap pack from Millie Mae. And I know a lot of people can make cardigans and tops and pants and clothes and things, but I was like, that's going to be my first carpet. So here it is. And I'm so proud of it. It's not perfect, but y'all, I'm going to keep trying and making it nice. You know, I'm just going to keep making them. So anyway, Let's get started. What you're gonna need are some scissors, nice sharp scissors. You're going to need some of these darning needles. These essentially are used for embroidery, hand embroidery and things like that. The tips are very dull, okay? They're not super sharp, so you're not gonna like really poke yourself. But the reason why we picked these is because they have a very wide opening, so you can thread your fabric through them. And you're gonna need some fabric strips. I can recommend that you use a certain width, but it really depends on the fabric that you're using. What I have found is that, like this double brush polyester, when you pull it, it rolls over and it becomes a lot smaller. So if you're using like an alpaca, it doesn't shrivel up as much when you pull it, so you can make thinner strips of alpaca. So basically with the double brush polyester, I like to do like a one and a half to two inch strip because then I have just what I need. So what I do is I take these little strips that I have made and I put four or actually three, three of them on top of one another, just like this. Now you don't really need a sewing machine to get started, but if you were going to, if you were going to go ahead and use your sewing machine, you could, or you can just simply hand stitch these across. So I put three of these strips on top of one another and I just quickly sew them straight across to keep them together. I'm going to go ahead and sew them right now. Now I have them all nice and sewn. So they're all three of them are sewn together just like this. Okay, now all I have to do is braid them. So in order to braid them, sometimes it can be a little bit difficult if you don't have help. You can safety pin this to like a chair or anything and then just braid it. Sometimes I just put it in my mouth because I'm lazy. <laughs> and so you just braid this and I'll fast forward to me having already braided this thing because I know y'all don't want to sit there and wait for me, but I'll braid about maybe a foot-ish or less. 
Okay, you see how pretty this is? This is very pretty. I feel like if I had all of this here fabric, which by the way, tends to be on sale around this time because it's fall and these colors are really spring summer colors. So have a look at your fabric shops and see if they have any double brush poly on clearance right now. Anyway, so I've braided it and I've got three end pieces. Now you need that fourth piece because this is a braid in. So all you're gonna do is take an extra strip, right? And then kind of finagle it into your braid. And then you're just gonna sew it. Just gonna sew it across so it stays in there. Just a second. Let me do that. Okay, now that's all the sewing machine you're gonna need. Go ahead and snip those threads off, just like that. And the funny part is my mom didn't even do this with a sewing machine. She actually just did it by hand because it really is that easy. Okay, so now that I have my thread snipped, you'll see that I have four strips. Four. Okay, so all I have to do now is... First, I put my fabric strips through the holes of my darning needles. Or you can use upholstery needles, but they're just really long. Um, so I put these strips through here. Now these strips, they go through really easy. If you have a sweater knit, which I also, I have here some ribbed knit in this and some, I think it's a waffle in here it's going to be a little bit thicker so you may want to go ahead and roll up a safety pin or a one of those little pins for paper paper i have my braid and it has four strips one two three and four each one has a darning needle at the end Okay, the part where I initially sewed them together is here at the top. So what I do is I take these and pull them over this way. Okay, so now my braid is flat, but all of my strips are bent towards me, just like this. So you have the top and all of your strips. Now is the fun part. You take this one, which is the outside, and you go under, the first, and then over the second, under the third. So you're like weaving it. And I will do a close up so that you can see, or a drawing so that you can see. And then the last one is going to go over and through the first loop here on your braid. So I've gone under, over, under, and then through here. Do you see each one of these little loops? This is where you're going to tuck your fabric in, okay? And pull it straight through. Now, tension-wise, you wanna be careful because you don't wanna pull it too tight because what you'll end up with is a bowl. Now, you take the string that is on the outside, which for me here is this one, and you want to go under over, under again, and then through the next loop. Now this one is very, very long because this is the string that I, or this is the fabric strip that I just added, okay? So it's a little bit longer than the other ones. Right, now you can see how you now have, you're starting to 
form kind of a pattern there, right? Now you go and you do the same thing again, under, over, under, and over and through the bottom of that loop. Yay. Okay. So now you kind of can straighten up whatever little loops you have there. Because this is a knit, sometimes it's gonna stretch quite a bit, so you wanna make sure you're not over stretching the fabric, because you don't wanna pull it up towards you, but you do wanna make sure it's nice and taut. And now you can see I have quite a bit of a pattern here. That's how you get started on your braid and rug. You just continue to do that until you come around the corners. Next, we're gonna talk about how you get around those corners without making it too tight in just a second. How to add strips to your rug. Because this is the kind of thing that you can't necessarily make a yarn for because you'd be threading and pulling for days. So you wanna make it as you go. Keep extra strips around. And it's very important that when you have some free time, just cut some strips or just do them ahead of time. So you take your strip like this and you fold it in half and then you just snip a tiny little hole on the end. You take your strip for your rug, fold it in half, and also snip a tiny little hole. You take your strip with the hole and you put your fabric strip through the first. So the one you're adding, you take you take the strip from the rug and you put it through the hole on the strip you are adding. Once you have done that, you open up the strip from the rug and then you pull the end of the strip you're adding through that hole. What that does is it creates an interlocking knot. You see, easy. The cool thing about doing this kind of rug is that each strip is going to end in a different place. That way you don't have one spot on your rug where it's just naughty, naughty, naughty everywhere. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and add another strip by cutting a tiny hole here in this fabric. And with some fabrics, you're going to have to be very careful about the hole because I have learned that with sweater knits, if you cut a very, very tiny hole because of the way they're loosely woven, you could just end up unraveling your entire piece. So here's one question you may have. Nine, which direction should I cut my fabric strips? Now for me, in my experience with my rug, which I actually started probably three or four different times, I have found that cutting across the grain is best for me. It allows my fabric a little bit more flexibility. Um, when using like a fabric that has only two way stretch, I still wanna cut in the direction that's gonna stretch the most for me because I feel like it allows more flexibility in my fabric. Also, you might wanna consider how your fabric rolls. 
if your fabric and a lot of, you know, knits have white on one side and they have print on another, you want to cut your fabric so that your fabric is going to roll with the print on the outside. Okay. So you want to make sure you cut your fabric so that your print will be on the right side when you're done because nobody uses custom fabric and then wants none of the custom to show. Not that it's going to matter because it's going to be very, very small, but you know, that's where all the color is. So you want your fabric to roll towards the side where all the color is. Now with double brush polyester, it's not really going to matter because both sides pretty much look the same color. Um, the texture isn't going to matter as much as you have woven it into a carpet. So I will show you my additions here. You can see I have added here, here, and here. Now I will continue to weave under, over, under, over. Now don't worry about the knots because when you are done with your carpet, you're just going to weave those little flailing pieces, the excess pieces, you're just going to weave them back into your rug. So you don't really need to stress too much about how messy or how neat it is as you're weaving it because those pieces are going to go bye bye when you're done. That's the fun thing about this is that you don't have to be super technical. You don't even really have to think hard about it when you're doing it. Listen, I do this in the car while I'm waiting for my kids to get out of school. I do this when we're on our way to the grocery store in the car. I do this on the couch when I'm watching the news. You know, if I can't sleep at night, I'll pick it up and I'll start weaving it while my kids are outside playing and I'm watching them. I'll sit on the, uh, on the porch chair and I'll just, you know, weave, weave, weave. <laughs> just because it's something mindless that I can do and just kind of occupy myself. So this is kind of a fun thing to do if you just kind of want something to, to occupy your mind or just to occupy your hands while your mind is okay. busy with something. Now that you've gotten to the point where you're about to turn the corner, all you need to do is continue to weave. So your end piece is here, your four weaving pieces are here try to keep them in order because once they get out of order, you'll be like under, over, under, ah. <laughs> so what you want to do is you just want to continue weaving. You'll see that there's a loop here and a loop here and you will just go around and ignore the little piece in the top here, okay? When you come around the corners, you're going to want to add an extra uh, through the loop. So instead of going under, over, under, over, and then through the loop once, and then going to the next loop, you're going to go under, 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 over, under, over, and then you're going to go through that same loop one more time. What it does is it creates a wider turn radius. That way it doesn't just get smaller and smaller or stay the same size, because if you go in the circle at the same like radius, then you end up making a bowl, and we don't want that. So we want to add some extra spread at the corners. So I would go under, over, under, over, and through this loop. And then I would do it again, under, over, under, over, and through this exact same loop again to get around the corners.
I'm going to go ahead and stop this tutorial here because there are some other tips and things that I need to address in another video. I don't want to have you here all day. Only Nancy would do something like that. So rude. <laughs> so go ahead and get your strips cut. Go ahead and get your rug started. And then I will see you next week with some tips on how to keep your rug straight, how to prevent having a bowl, how to, again, put your strips together, and yeah, maybe also how to finish up your rug. I'll be weaving all this week to finish this one. I can't wait to see yours. Okay, I hope you had a fabulous week. I had a glorious day today with you, and I can't wait to see you next week. Goodbye, friends.